it's Jazz and this is Wildlife Matters. Last April 22nd, we celebrated Earth Day. Now I'm sure that you've seen so many posters circulating around the net talking about Earth Day, but you know, it made me realize that how many people actually know what Earth Day is about. So today, let's talk about why we're even celebrating Earth Day. And the answer is, it starts with two letter C's. Climate change. This is scratched paper, by the way, just so you know. You've heard about it in school, you read it on the news, you hear it in documentaries, but if you were to ask me right now to give you the simplest explanation of what climate change is, what would it be? Climate change is a serious problem we face today. It's when a region's climate, meaning its temperature and its weather, have drastically changed over a period of time. Now you may think to yourself, how does this differ from other weather changes? I mean, we have seasons, the weather changes all the time, Jazz. Well, it's actually very different, and here's the reason why. Seasons are caused by the Earth's tilted axis, wherein throughout the year, different parts of the Earth are exposed to more of the sun's rays. But climate change isn't a natural occurrence and it's mostly caused by humans. And unlike seasons, climate change is permanent and irreversible. And there's also what we call global climate change because apparently this has been happening not only in some regions, but also all over the world. But how exactly has it changed? What happens when we have climate change? Well, some of the effects of climate change are rising maximum temperatures. Winters are getting shorter. Lakes and ponds are freezing less. Rising sea levels and higher ocean temperatures. As the temperature gets warmer, there is an increase in storms and heavy rains and even hail. More and more typhoons have been coming our way. Just last year here in my country, the Philippines, we've had around 20 typhoons. Another effect is shrinking glaciers and thawing permafrost. Permafrost is what you call ground that has been frozen for years and it covers large regions of the planet. With unusually higher temperatures, the earth is getting hotter than ever. And as the ocean temperatures heat up, our coral reefs are dying because they just can't take the heat. So what happens to the animals? I'm sure you've seen those videos online and in documentaries of polar bears in the melting ice caps. And you know, those videos have been playing around for years and I hope you're not desensitized to it because until now that is something that is still happening. Because with climate change, animals are rapidly being driven towards extinction. As both land and sea are going through drastic changes, so are the animals that live in them. If they don't get to quickly adapt to these changes, they're living on borrowed time. Some animals are able to adapt and some don't. Many animals have been migrating to places with cooler climates or higher altitudes just to escape the effect of global warming. For marine life, as the ocean gets warmer, many of them are at risk because many marine animals can only survive in colder temperatures. A lot of them are even sensitive to even the slightest change in ocean temperature. And with things like ocean heat waves, yes, that is a real thing. A lot of our marine animals are dying. In some places where animals migrate to, food is no longer abundant to sustain both those animals and the native animals that live in that area. And so animals end up starving because there's just not enough food to sustain them all. Even plants and vegetation has had to adjust only to survive. They are now blooming off season and as a result, it affects wildlife, especially those who migrate just to feed during specific seasons. For example, in Greenland, caribous are declining in numbers because by the time that they arrive in their summer breeding grounds, plants are no longer abundant enough because they bloomed earlier than the expected seasons. And as a result, as the caribous go there, there's not enough vegetation to go around. And so young caribous end up dying. So if they can't reproduce, then how do they sustain their existence? According to scientific studies, many animals are disappearing 114 times faster than they actually should. And a huge reason for that is climate change. But what about us humans? Climate change has been ruining our lives for so long. So let me give you just a few examples of how climate change has been really affecting us. 
Number one, viruses. When permafrost, which again is ground that has been frozen for many years, begins to thaw, well, so do the ancient bacteria and viruses that have been buried in it. And so when these things unfreeze, they get exposed in the air and us humans and even animals get exposed and get sick from these viruses as well. And you know what? Scientists are afraid that if permafrost keeps continuing to thaw, then permafrost pandemics could possibly happen in the future. Number two, calamities. Hotter ocean and air temperatures are part of the reasons why typhoons and hurricanes are stronger and stronger. And with the rise of sea levels, these storms end up very destructive by inducing more floods, just like with what happened with Typhoon Yolanda or Hurricane Katrina. So as long as climate change is getting worse, so will our typhoons and hurricanes. Droughts and heat waves are also more intense now as the temperature gets warmer. And as a result, humans are dying from heat exhaustion, heat strokes, cardiovascular diseases, kidney disease, and aggravated allergies, all of which are connected to the planet's rising temperatures. Number three, economic poverty. With extreme weather changes, natural disasters, food shortages, and drought, economies are crashing. I mean, think about it. Just recovering from the destruction of a typhoon has been so costly on our economy. Think about how the COVID pandemic alone has crashed the global economy. And when people think that issues like this only affect the poor, think about how many people, how many wealthy people have now become bankrupt because of this pandemic. Countries are in debt. We're moving backwards and we're trying to recover from catastrophes bigger than we ever imagined they could be. Climate change is real and it's happening now. So what caused it? Well, the one word simple answer is humans. As the civilization of mankind is evolving, we are constantly discovering new things, making new inventions and finding ways that we could make our lives easier. But with all these new things we're creating, that means we're also creating more needs. These industries don't run on nothing. They run on fossil fuels, which are fuels that are dug up from underground, like coal, petroleum, and gas, which supply about 80% of the world's energy. We need them for our electricity, we need them for transportation, and we need them to make heat. And consuming fossil fuels releases toxic gases like carbon dioxide, that when released into the air, cause global warming and climate change. The more of it we consume, the more we are killing the planet. There's this thing called the greenhouse effect, which is basically when gases in the Earth's atmosphere, called greenhouse gases, trap the sun's heat instead of allowing it to leave the Earth. And as a result, make our planet's temperature hotter than it should actually be. Since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, people have been burning fossil fuels non-stop. Agriculture is another factor that contributes to climate change because humans have been converting forest lands into agricultural or farmlands. When we convert these forests, we cut down trees and trees absorb carbon dioxide, which is like I said, a greenhouse gas. As long as we're cutting trees, which are supposed to be absorbing those greenhouse gases, we're getting rid of exactly what we need to keep climate change from happening. According to Scientific American, deforestation is responsible for 15% of the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Even our agricultural practices have been causing climate change because we've been using fertilizers that release gases like nitrous oxide and methane that apparently are greenhouse gases as well. Humans are the most intelligent beings on the planet. And with that same intelligence that we use to come up with new innovations and improved ways of living, I'm sure that we can come up with more and more ways that we can stop climate change from getting worse. So what are some examples of how you and I can do our part to stop climate change? But before we move on to those examples, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, join our Facebook community page, and follow my social media pages. Number one, use your car less, or if you really need to, go carpooling or do your errands in places closer to home. This will help lessen the amount of carbon dioxide that your car emits in the air. 
Number two, reduce as much water as you can. Take shorter showers, turn the faucet off when you don't need it, and try to recycle your water. Like let's say, for example, the water that you use to wash your vegetables, you can use it to water your plants. Number three, consume more environmentally friendly foods like rice, beans, and wheat. They're all cheap, they're healthy, and they're environmentally friendly. And of course, you can try to eat less meat because meat is also part of the reasons why we're going through this climate crisis. Number four, switch to renewable energies like solar energy. Number five, purchase more efficient lighting bulbs like LEDs and recycle the old wasteful incandescents. Number six, upgrade your appliances to the more energy saving ones. Number seven, walk, bike, or commute. Number eight, refrain from using single-use plastics. Number nine, practice sustainable living. Try using shampoo bars. Try going waste-free. There are so many things that you can look up online to help you practice sustainability. So whatever it is, even if you can just take it one step at a time, try adding something to your daily lifestyle that practices sustainability. Number 10, recycle or upcycle. Number 11, when you're shopping for new clothes, opt to go thrift shopping instead of buying brand new. Because you know what they say, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Number 12, be a plant parent. Grow your own garden. Get some indoor plants. Plant your own vegetables. Because all these things are going to help in cleaning the air. They will also absorb the carbon dioxide that again, we need much less of in order to save our planet from climate change. 13, plant more trees. Number 14, do not support the illegal wildlife trade. And I can't stress this enough. When we take away animals from their natural environment, they don't get to do their jobs of keeping their ecosystems alive. Forests, jungles, savannas, and oceans all need these wild animals to stay healthy. Poaching them destroys those habitats by robbing animals of their important roles. And number 15, speak up. Don't be afraid to use your voice and speak up, even if there are people around you who don't think that this issue is a serious one. Like I always say, we have to keep the conversation going. Climate change is like a sinking ship. Everyone is gonna go down with it. We have to start doing something now. And those are just 15 easy, simple ways that you can add to your life in order to help fight the problem. There is no one way, one size fits all solution to fight climate change. We all have something to contribute. And to end this video, I'd like to share a quote from one of our planet's greatest earth advocates, Sir David Attenborough. He said that everything is set for us to win this future. We have a plan, we know what to do. There is a path to sustainability. It is a path that could lead to a better future for all life on Earth. We must let our politicians and business leaders know that we understand this, that this vision for the future is not just something we need, it is something that above all, we want. We all have to want to save the planet. And that's why I'm making this video today because if you haven't been brushed up on the basics of what climate change is, then I hope that this video helped you out. I hope that this video was an eye-opener to you guys, to everyone watching this, and let's do our part because don't forget that every piece of wildlife matters. So today, let's... Oh, where's my props? I'm ready to film. We're getting ready to have it started. Let's go. Let's go. Couch potato. Okay. Hey, it's Jazz, and this is Wildlife Matters. It's true, we. <laughs> hey, it's Jazz, and this is Wildlife Matters. Last sat, and it's uh, sweating. <laughs> NASA scientists have observed that. NASA scientists have observed NASA scientists. I don't know why I'm NASA scientists have observed. NASA scientists have, have observed. Another effect is shrinking glaciers. Glaciers. Another effect is shrinking glaciers. Glaci glaciers. Another effect. Another effect is shrinking glaciers and thawing. Th 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 and when I hear the words that the. Another effect is shrinking glaciers. 
so hard, man. Because with climate change, caribous are decreasing in numbers because by the time that they arrive to their breeding ground, blah, blah, blah. Ah, uh, ban. I'm sure that we can come up with more and more ways for us. No, no. Blah.